And the Oscar goes to... Oh boy, what can I say about Casablanca? It's up there with Citizen Kane as one of the most hailed and most loved films ever made. For decades, it's been analyzed by men and women much smarter than I. So what can I, a poor schmo who reviews movies online, say that hasn't already been said a million times? I don't know. Let's find out by starting at the beginning. Casablanca was, by my great surprise, and maybe yours, based on an unproduced play called Everybody Comes to Ricks, written by Murray Bennett and Joan Allison. Warner Brothers producer Hal Wallace bought the film rights in January 1942 for $20,000, and, at that time, unprecedented sum for an unproduced play. Casablanca was also adapted into multiple radio plays, two short-lived prequel TV shows, the first running from 1955 to 1956, another airing in 1983, and two novels, As Time Goes By in 1998, and Suspects in 1985. There are also failed attempts by Julius Epstein, one of the screenwriters, to bring Casablanca to Broadway in the form of a musical in 1951 and 1967. After the film's success, there was talk of a sequel called Brazzaville. The picture never materialized. Casablanca follows Rick Blaine, played by Humphrey Bogart, the owner of Rick's Cafe American, a respectable establishment where everybody goes to drink and not so secretly gamble during the early days of World War II. Rick's a neutral in the matters of war, politics, love, and just about everything. He sticks his neck out for nobody and he lets everyone know it. Running a saloon in Casablanca isn't easy. The city is the meeting place for refugees and those of dubious character. All are seeking exit visas so they can get a plane to Lisbon, the final stop before transport to America, where many are hoping to escape the Nazi dictatorship in Europe. Ugarte, a slimy character played by Peter Lorre, has a proposition for Rick. Look, Rick. You know what this is? Something that even you have never seen. Letters of Transit, signed by General Vigon. Cannot be rescinded, not even questioned. One moment. Tonight I'll be selling those for more money than even I have ever dreamed of. And then, adio, Casablanca. You know, Rick, I have many a friend in Casablanca, but somehow, just because you despise me, you are the only one I trust. Will you keep these for me, please? For how long? Oh, perhaps an hour, perhaps a little longer. I don't want them here overnight. Mm, don't be afraid of that. Please keep them for me. Thank you. I knew I could trust you. Ugarte wants to sell the letters to Victor Laszlo, played by Paul Heinrich, and Ilsa, played by Ingrid Bergman. Victor is a huge player in Nazi resistance throughout Europe, and the recently arrived Nazi soldiers, led by Major Heinrich Strasser, played by Conrad Veidt, would like nothing more than to throw him in prison. After Ugarte is captured by local police, Rick is unwilling to give the papers to Ilsa and Victor due to a past love relationship between him and Ilsa that didn't end on the best terms. In the meantime, a sharp eye is being kept on Rick, Victor, and Ilsa by Captain Renold, played by Claude Rains. Renold is the crooked head of local police who is kind of sort of friends with Rick and is a frequenter of his saloon, the gambling section particularly. The captain is a complicated fellow, but he is not about to let anybody leave Casablanca without his authorization, especially if they are of interest to the Third Reich. Cindy Greenstreet also appears in a supporting role as a competitor of Rick's. Bogart rarely ceases to surprise me with his performances. Sometimes he delivers a line in a way I didn't expect, or his style of performance is slightly different from his contemporaries, or, in the case of Casablanca, he brings an unforeseen vulnerability. True or not, I always have this view of Bogart's characters being tough men's men, who wear emotions that don't involve punching people deep in their hairy chests. While he is certainly still a man's man in Casablanca, he has a few emotional scenes in the film where he's in a afraid to chisel away at that rough exterior. At times he is even gentle. You see this in Rick and Ilsa's romance, which is soft, quiet, and intimate. I can't fight it anymore. I ran away from you once, I can't do it again. Oh, I don't know what's right any longer. You have to think for both of us. For all of us. All right, I will. Who's looking at you, kid? I wish I didn't love you so much. It's such a great thing for Bogart to bring to the role because it pulls away at the old-fashioned acting of the Golden Age and shows modern audiences that people 73 years ago experienced and suffered through the same emotions as we do now. 
It's an end for a new generation. The screenwriters seamlessly tie the romance in with the war story. The early 1940s were partially a time of fear. In Casablanca, we don't see the widespread death and destruction like we do in other World War II Best Picture winners like Mrs. Miniver and Schindler's List. People are on the run from something horrible, but except for brief footage of soldiers and tanks moving through Europe, what they're running from is left unshown except for those in the Nazi party represented by Veidt's character. The film wants to say how horrible the Nazis are and how terrible it could be if they win the war and rule everything. Remember, you may know how the war ends, but when this movie came out, people didn't know who was going to win. Casablanca therefore chooses to answer back to the Nazis with scenes like where the French refugees hiding out in Casablanca sing their national anthem against the Nazis' national anthem. It's almost a proclamation by the French and others that they will not bow down to the Nazis. They will instead continue to resist and to fight. We are left with a glimmer of hope that we have a lot of work to do, but everything will turn out right in the end. It's an upbeat look that we haven't seen much in the war films of this series. The romance plays an important part in this side of the film by showing us what's being destroyed by the war. Yes, millions of soldiers are dying, but, like Mrs. Miniver, normal people are being affected too. Newly married couples who just want to live a happy life, average Joes who probably just want to make a living, and those with past relationships that are being rekindled. Casablanca was intended to be just another Warner Brothers love story, but the war theme is handled so well that it still hits you today and should continue to be talked about. Then again, maybe I'm over-focusing on the war angle. I will say the struggles in Mrs. Miniver got to me more, possibly because we do see the homes being obliterated and the lives being lost. Also, I have to admit that while the love story is good in Casablanca, it isn't as natural and flawless as Clark Gable and Claudia Colbert in It Happened One Night, or Greer Garson and Walter Pidgeon in Mrs. Miniver. I don't want to go any further without mentioning Rick's piano player, Sam. Sam is played by Dooley Wilson. Wilson was an African-American actor, singer, and drummer. He fakes playing the piano in this movie. Unlike the few other black characters we've seen in this series so far, we finally, finally have a real person without any hints of the yesum or any other black racist stereotypes that plague Cimarron, or even, to an extent, Gone with the Wind. Sam is an actual person shown to be on the same level as everybody else. Well, sort of. Wilson's part is minor when you really look at it, he's billed low on the cast list, and his character does work for Rick. But Rick makes it crystal clear that he sees Sam as an equal, both as a man and as a business partner. They're good friends, and color doesn't matter to either of them. They love each other and want the other to be happy. They fight sometimes, but Sam isn't afraid to stand up to Rick when the latter gets angry. Black characters still had, and have, a long way to go, but actual progression from racist stereotypes is so nice to finally see in this series. By the way, could you ask for a better cast than this? I mean, you have Bogart, Bergman, Heinrich, Veidt, Laurie, and Greenstreet, all A-level talent giving it their best for a story which wasn't supposed to be anything special. They all grace the screen with their usual talent and charisma. Well, Bogey, Reigns, Laurie, and Greenstreet do, I honestly haven't seen much of the others. If I had to single out one actor that wasn't Bogart, it would be Claude Rains. This man damn near steals every scene he's in. I don't know if it's the dry wit, the below-the-surface contempt for the Nazi party that he hides with fake loyalty knowing he'll be killed if he shows opposition, or if it's that magnificent voice. But every scene he's in is a highlight. He's also given my favorite part in the whole film. Everybody is to leave here immediately. This cafe is closed until further notice. Clear the room at once. How can he close me up? On what ground? I'm shocked, shocked to find that gambling is going on in here. You're winning, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Everybody out at once. Far and away, my favorite thing about Casablanca is its sense of humor. It doesn't hit every mark, but when it does, it hits the bullseye. Here are some of my favorite lines. Boss is private stuff. Because he won, I love you. Oh, shut up. All right, all right. For you, I shut up. Because he won, I love you. Give me another. Sasha, she's had enough. Don't listen to him, Sasha. I'll fill it up. He won, I love you. But he pays me. Et moi, je vous dis que la situation de l'Italie est immonde. Qu'est-ce que vous auriez fait sans l'armée allemande? Et la crête. Ce pauvre petit pays grince, mon cher. If he gets a word, and it'll be a major Italian victory. We have a complete dossier on you. Richard Blaine, American, age 37, cannot return to his country. 
The reason is a little vague. We also know what you did in Paris, Mr. Blaine, and also we know why you left Paris. Don't worry, we are not going to broadcast it. Oh, my eye's really brown. Now for the part that will probably give me some dislikes. For all its many positives, I do not love this film. I don't. It happened one night for me, still reigns supreme as the top dog for the best picture winners thus far. And I really thought Casablanca might overthrow it. It didn't, but that doesn't mean Casablanca is bad. I hold it happened one night in very high regard, and it's hard for another film to reach those heights. Casablanca gave a valiant effort with its undeniably great cast, its credible, if not always satisfiable, love relationship, its poignancy, and its sense of humor. All those things are good, but they aren't all where I hoped they would be when I went into this film. Maybe it has something to do with expectations being too high, but the love story needed to have that extra bit of chemistry, the story needed to hit me harder, and the humor needed to be just a little better. It's still a classic, and without hesitation, I think it deserves that status. So while for me it may merely be good as opposed to great, I can give it top marks for a job well done. to leave here immediately. This cafe is closed until further notice. Clear the room at once. How can he close me up? On what ground? I'm shocked, shocked to find that gambling is going on in here. You're winning, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Everybody out at once. 